Our speaker today, Eugene Jones, Jr., is the Chief Executive Officer of the Chicago Housing Authority. As CEO, Gene Jones is directly responsible for implementing the CHA's extensive redevelopment program of public housing, continuing the agency's mixed income focused strategic initiatives to help build strong, vibrant communities throughout Chicago. Gene Jones brings more than 35 years of service and experience in housing operations, resident services, accounting and finance, auditing, maintenance, new construction, capital construction, housing choice voucher programs. Now when I was reading his bio and vita here, it said he earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Albuquerque in New Mexico and an MBA from New Mexico Highlands University, which by the way is in Las Vegas, New Mexico. So if you're ever on Jeopardy, remember that. So I said, Gene, did you grow up in New Mexico? How did you end up there? Gene was a member of the United States Air Force, stationed in New Mexico. Gene, we thank you for your service, and now we're ready for you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to be here again. I just want to tell you, um, I'm three years in now, three years old. Three years ago, 2015, I came here to Chicago Housing Authority. Thought I was going to have the time of my life, and it came true. Really did, and I appreciate everyone being here. All my friends, personal, professionally, my staff. I have to thank my board of commissioners who are here. Uh, Chairman John Hooker could not be here. I thank my staff, I thank our residents at CHA and so forth, and so let's get on with the program. I hope this is going to be excited for you. I'm excited to present this to you. Stop me from going too fast because I have so much to say about CHA. It's a different focus this, this time in my presentation. Last time I did this, it was about bricks and mortars. This time is going to be what we've done to enhance the lives of our residents in our communities and in the surrounding communities. First, I want to thank City Club for allowing me to be here, and I want to thank Mayor Emanuel for uh, allowing me to be here and for all his leadership. I want to thank uh, Dr. Gabriel Esteban, President of DePaul University, and his wife, Joe, who are joining us here today, important partners for CHA. I have a lot to tell you today, but first I want to share you a video about a topic that is near and dear to my heart in CHA, youth education. So I just want my um, students to have confidence that they need to tackle anything, whether that's rapping, that's sports, that's education, being a teacher. I want them to know that they become not who they want to be, but who they believe themselves to be. I grew up on Lake Park Street, um, which is near the lake. And I grew up with my mom and my sister. My mom was a single mother. And we grew up all in through like Chicago Housing Authority every summer. That's where we, we would be going on field trips, to baseball games, to anything that would expose us to something different. In high school, I was working really hard. I um, had a 4.2 grade point average. Um, I did so many extracurricular activities. I was in JROTC. I was on leadership staff in my school. I did so many things that um, basically set me aside. When I went off to college, I was adjusting so much to the culture shock. So all my family was still up in Chicago. So I hadn't quite yet adjusted or learned to get used to um, my environment in college yet. CHA helped me out with all of basically getting through my day-to-day -day activities. CHA not only provided the financial means for me to finish, but they provided me the guidance to say, okay, now that you've um, received this financial assistance, we're going to back you up and make sure that you understand. We had the um, take flight ceremonies where we actually talked about college and how to navigate financial aid. CHA coming in at that point and saying we support you and saying that here's how you navigate financial aid. This is how you get your um, get aids on reports and papers. Talk to your teachers. Those were keys that most students already had that I didn't have, so I really appreciate that. 
Me going to college for the first time through like having the CHA scholarship, the Posse scholarship, and those supports that I needed inspired my mom and she graduated in the same year that I graduated. Our graduation was on the same day. And she like it was a really emotional moment for us because she decided to come to mind even though she hadn't been trying to graduate for 10 years. I keep going in a full circle like with my life. I started in Chicago Housing Authority. I um, went to Chicago Public Schools. I got a scholarship to college, felt very successful. And then I realized something was missing. I had to go right back around to where I came from that brought me to Teach for America. The one thing I think about when I think about Jocelyn is her ability to reflect. It, it's not easy. Oftentimes people think like getting up in front of kids, oh, a teacher, anyone can be a teacher. It's really humbling. And she was able to realize that she might have failed the first few times and just get back up and try it again and do it again and reach out for help and just fight for these kids. We have a lot of work to do in education period for our kids. We have so much work to do. We need dedicated, passionate people coming back to our kids and really being here, going through the struggles with them to help them come out on top. I'm just so humbled by this experience because I thought that I was going to see a lot of myself in these kids, but what I'm learning is that it's not about me seeing so much of myself. It's about me helping them realize to see, like helping them see themselves. I'm driving home and I see one of my kids at McDonald's with their families, and they're like, hi, Miss Charles, hi, hi. The reward right now is coming from building those relationships and building those bonds with my kids every single day. Right now, I'd like to invite Jocelyn Jones to come up to the stage, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Before I get started, I just wanted to point out in that video that I met Oprah. <laughs> just in case you guys didn't catch that at my graduation, she was my commencement speaker, and not many people could say they met Oprah, so I just want to start off with that. <laughs> okay, good afternoon again. My name is Jocelyn Jones. I'm delighted to speak with you all this afternoon. I'm a Posse Scholar. I graduated from the Air Force Academy, thank you, go Posse, some people know Posse. Um, I graduated from the Air Force Academy High School with honors in Agnes Scott College in Decatur, Georgia. I've interned at the Institute of Politics at the University of Chicago, and I've studied abroad as a Gilman International Education Scholar. At this time in my life, I'm a special education teacher at CICS Wrightwood Elementary. Woo! Thank you. It's a great school on the south side of Chicago, and I teach special education, grades kindergarten through fourth. It's a lot, but it's cool. <laughs> I wanted to come up here today because I honestly feel that looking back, I know I wouldn't have never been able to accomplish everything that I've accomplished without the help of the Chicago Housing Authority. Growing up, I knew two things all too well. The first thing was poverty. And the second thing was that with poverty came pretty much an inevitable hardship. The desire to survive, the constant exposure to unhealthy foods, and pretty much walking every day through a metal detector in order to get to my classroom was the reality I was hit with every day. Yeah, you could say, Hmm. That's a sense of normalcy for me, or at least it was. It seems like a sense of normalcy when it's passed down from generation to generation. It wasn't until my mother signed me up for CHA summer programs that I was exposed to other options. Now, instead of surrounding myself with circumstances I did not create, I was participating in programs that were going to allow me to control how I saw that experience for the first time in my life. These programs include BMO Harris Bank Financial Literacy and Leadership Institute, my first Cubs game, me learning which fork to use in events like this so I wouldn't be intimidated. That's real, like, just so y'all know. <laughs> um, 
The Chicago Housing Authority has equipped me with life skills that are embedded into who I am today. One of my most memorable experiences was participating in a CHA reading and math enrichment program founded by Siemens Technologies, I'm sorry, um, sponsored by Siemens Technologies over the summer. That summer, I was not only introduced into the world of STEM, but I also was introduced to myself and my work ethic, a work ethic that I took back to school with me that fall. The Chicago Housing Authority introduced me to myself by giving me the gift of exposure. That exposure gave me hope, and that hope fueled my ambition to basically write my own narrative. I went from being, this is, I'm sorry, this is really emotional for me as it's coming back up. Um, okay. I went from being a poor kid in public housing that no one expected to do well to earning a four-year tuition-paid scholarship to the college of my choice through Posse. Thank you. <laughs> to being the first person to get on a plane to go to school but not only get on a plane, but to travel across seas to Europe, to one of my favorite places in the world now, Bulgaria. And, thank you. And of course, when there were gaps between my reality and my goals, I was constantly supported by CHA and earned a scholarship to help me pay for my books, which a lot of students don't really think about until they get there. They think about the cost of tuition, but also it's the cost of living and paying for books and making sure that you're okay every day. And CHA came through. So thank you. Today, I want to remind you all that perspectives matter and exposure matters. I want to say that again because that is the key of what I'm saying. Perspectives matter and exposure to a new experiences matter. As a 2017 Teach for America Corps member, every day I feel my students' lives in my hands. I walk, I walk a tight rope knowing that my actions can either make my kids fall in love with learning and education, or it can just help them resent the idea of education altogether. <coughs> Some people will say, I'm being dramatic about my job. You're just a teacher. It's not that deep. Kids are pretty much going to get through anything that's thrown their way. And part of that may be true. Kids are strong, and they're resilient. But I know from my mother's experience with education that a lack of guidance and exposure can be damaging. Take my mother, a phenomenal woman who spent her entire childhood in special education. When I was growing up, she would always tell my sister and I, my younger sister Jessica, Make sure that you pay attention in class. Make sure that you pay attention in your after school program because I cannot help you with your work. Even years after being out of, house, out of high school, she felt she was not smart enough or well equipped enough to help her children with, her homework, with their homework. Her confidence was non-existent. Over the years, we have worked as a family to help my mother build her confidence. And I'm proud to say that not only does she have one more year to graduate from Roosevelt University with her um, bachelor's in sociology, but she has also been accepted to the pro into a program that will help her achieve her PhD. <laughs> My mother's story is too familiar to many students today. A lack of guidance, love, and exposure directly affects how they see themselves, just as it did my mother. I believe that exposure is essential to growth. Though I knew this from a personal standpoint from seeing my mother, I was actually challenged this year as a teacher to understand what that mean, meant for me professionally. I'm about to break it down for y'all real quick because we are teaching our kids for the first time at CICS Wrightwood a new curriculum called Engage New York. 
Now, many of you may not be familiar with this curriculum because it is based for um, grades, kindergarten through eighth grade, so they can find different ways to learn math and not just learn how to do math the way we were taught, but math in a way that we really just don't understand right now. But it's understanding how to conceptually understand what they're doing. And it is the hardest thing that we have ever had to do so far. I remember being in my um, professional develop meetings and all of us being exhausted, the teachers included, we're all exhausted because we've never taught this way, we've never learned this way, yet we're trying to push our kids to get as much exposure as possible. At this rate, we wanted to go back to the way that we had learned math. During that PD, my principal asked us one question that stuck with me and will stick with me for the rest of my life. First, she began with a statistic. I want you guys to all know this statistic that's out there. Did you know that the average black eighth grader reads at the level of an average white fourth grader? That's a lot to swallow, and it makes my job even more meaningful at this time in my life. With that statistic in hand, she also asks us the question, so what do we do? Do we try to go back and fill in the gaps of what our kids need to know? Or do we expose our kids to everything that they could possibly see within this curriculum, this hard, rigorous curriculum that we're all trying to understand for the first time? I'm gonna be honest with you. Instantly, I thought, let's fill in the blanks. If we have a few kids that need help reading with that statistic, we need to fill in these blanks and make sure that they know how to read, have foundational skills, and let's just focus on that because quite honestly, that's easier for us to do right now. We know how to fill in the gaps and make sure that they understand phonetic awareness and how to read in regular basic math that we, le that we learned how to do growing up. Why not try that way? Then my principal told us to imagine that it was us or our kids. It's funny how when you take reality and put yourself in it, that it kind of changes the way you answer questions. I went from thinking that it would be easier for me to just expose them to the limited curriculum that we already knew and that they needed to move to the next level instead of exposing them to everything. But what I learned from that experience is that it's not any of our jobs to do what is easier for ourselves. And it's not our jobs to limit what we believe our youth can do. I'm bringing this experience to you guys to let you know and remind you that sometimes what we think is the best for kids for the first time is really not the best. But more importantly, to advocate that exposure is power. I am sure that my students have the capacity to create their own narratives that exceed their ex educational gaps or circumstances just as I did. I can't imagine what my life would be like right now if the Chicago Housing Authority would have never thought of, my, would have thought of me as just my childhood experiences, my limitations, what my circumstances were. If they thought, Jocelyn, you can't achieve more because you're in this circumstance right now. You come from a single family home. You come from poverty. If the, C the Chicago Housing Authority would have thought of me that way, I'm not sure where I would be. I don't know where I would be if they thought that exposure wasn't meant for me because of where I came from and who I was. As a representative of the youth in Chicago Housing Authority, understand that CHA programs light a match in the fire that we already have in ourselves. Give the gift of exposure. That is my message for today. Give that gift through CHA programming, through summer programming, to help our babies see that there's other things out there. Once you decide to give that gift of exposure, bet money, just watch what we do with it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
Jocelyn, she is exceptional, but she is not the exception. We've helped many students like Joshua, as you can see and you heard today. Pathway out of poverty is through education, ladies and gentlemen. Want to share how CHA impacts our youth and our adults. Four in 10 CHA residents over 18 have pursued some form of post-secondary education. Over 7,500 residents in Chicago in college. CHA adult residents have earned approximately 10,000 post-secondary degrees, ranging from certificates to graduate degrees, and some have earned as high as PhDs, JDs, and MDs. Here's a quote from Winston Churchill, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. An op optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Why does this matter? For every additional year of education obtained by a household head, the chances of the family leaving rental assistance with income increase by 11%. For a high school graduate earning an associate's degree, the household chances of ex exiting rental assistance with income would, be, would increase to 22%. Earning a college degree would increase chances of a positive exit 44% of the time. Do you guys understand that? The object of the game is to move out of subsidy and into being gainfully employed and being educated. Why CHA provides this support? With an average, average household income of around 13,000, it would take a rent-assisted adult who is under 50 years old, such as myself, <laughs> oh, nearly 29 years to earn a four-year degree and nine years to earn an associate's degree at a public university. Spending 10% of his or her yearly annual income on tuition with no additional loans or other sources of finances. That's a long time, ladies and gentlemen. How do we help? CHA scholarship program. Since 2013, CHA has awarded over 980 scholarships to our residents since 2013. Supported CHA residents attending 195 schools across this country. We now receive four times the number of scholarship applications that we did at the start of this program. Scholarships have totaled more than double to $250,000 in awards each year. CHA has invested, ladies and gentlemen, $1 million in scholarship programs and awards. Awarded 30% of our scholarships to returning students, enabling them to pursue and continue their education. Partners like the Michaels organization also make college possible for the CHA residents by awarding their own scholarships each year. So how do we know our investments are paying off? You just heard from Jocelyn. That is, it translates into a better future for them. Since we've been tracking, we've seen that this has paid off in two ways. Households are moving up in economic, economically, and CHA residents with a college degree earn 25% more than those without a degree. Partnerships with city colleges, Chancellor Salgado. CHA's partner with city colleges have helped many residents. City colleges, Erica Walker, Director of Student Development, Projects is here with us today. Erica, there you go. <laughs> Send an average of 600 CHA residents each year to City Colleges of Chicago. No cost to them. Many more attend on their own, covered fully by financial aid. For over 10 years, we have had the partnership with City Colleges to cover tuition, books, and fees for CHA residents when financial aid doesn't go, doesn't go too far. CHA residents can pursue any certificate or associate's degree from City College's campuses free. We have seen the number of degrees grow on a year-to-year -year basis since the start of the program and growth in our students opting to get an associate's degree over a certificate. And more than half of the students who graduate City College's through the Partners in Education program go on to transfer to a four-year college institution. We saw an 80% increase in enrollment from the start of the program through 2017. Retention rates of CHA students slightly outpace the community colleges of Chicago. Overall student body, CCC is 66% versus CHA, which is 68%. That's achieving and succeeding. CHA college persistence. We have supported CHA residents already in college so that when they come home on the summer break, they can take up to two courses each summer at city colleges, then transfer those credits to their university. Helps keep students part of the academic community year-round on track 
or ahead of schedule for graduation. We want our students to graduate. Anything we can do, we're going to do that. Helps get their degree with significantly less debt. Helping CHA residents get into college is important too. CH CPS partnership. CHA, Chicago Public Schools, partnering in our communities to ensure our youth are enrolled, attending, and supported in the classroom. Want to recognize Michelle Howard, the CPS scholarship manager. Michelle? <laughs> Who has supported our students to connect to greater scholarship opportunities and helped us promote CHA college programs in CPS schools. Thank you, Michelle. HUD grant, through a grant award from HUD, CHA helps young people ages 15 to 20 move from CPS to college with a one-on-one -on -one college coaching. We now have three education navigators that coach CHA families and across 18 properties, helps with the entire college application and admissions process, finds the right match, and fit for their college enrollment. CHA internship program, which is my baby. I'm very proud of this. It had never been done before. CHA provides an internship for over 100 college youth each summer. In fact, one young man is here, one young man here that's gone through the internship program was doing so well, we hired him. <laughs> Ivan. <laughs> we also work with our partners to get internship placements, like Dan Levinson from RSM, Consulting, who's here with us today, along with his intern, Devontae West. Will you please stand up? <laughs> the interesting uh, thing about this program is that we have 100 college students, so they come during the summertime, they call during the holiday seasons, and we try to employ them the best I can to get them off the street and keep them engaged in what we do at CHA. The interesting part is that I have a lot of graduations I have to go through this summer. I've asked each one of the internships to write us a letter, write me a letter personally on how they enjoyed this program, and they have to invite me to their graduation. Now, people may sit there and think, that's in, why would I want to go? Because I'm supporting their endeavors to say that an adult is engaged in what you're trying to do, and we want to help you and assist you. We want to be a support, not a deterrent or anything like that. We want to be there in that crowd, being as proud as their parents, their family members, and so forth, but we want to make sure that we're there and that we're in support so that they can spread that message all, uh, all throughout the city of Chicago. Springboard, springboard to success, S2S. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Gene, here we go again. This is good. How can we help? Now, you know what I'm going to say, OK? <laughs> You can, through our nonprofit affiliate, Springboard Success, which you have the information on your table. On your tables, there's information about S2S. We hope you consider supporting this today or join us on May 10th to learn more. We do a lot more for our youth than you ever even thought about. And people who know this know that we do a lot more and learn of all age than people realize. I'm really proud of our young people and the people who make this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, we just don't talk the talk. We walk the walk. When you donate to S2S, your money is being represented by a resident that lives in public and assisted housing. This is no joke. This is serious. We are very serious about all young people going to college and supporting them and getting that degree. Here's another quote. The truth is in, the truth is more important than the facts. Here's the truth. Housing development update. Now, of course, you're wondering what all, what we're doing in housing and development at CHA, well, I'm going to tell you. Here's the truth. Let me start by saying what we are and what we're not. CHA is not the housing of last resort. We achieved a 90% occupancy rate in 2017, and it's only going to keep growing up thanks to our rehab units, better management, and better amenities in our facilities. That's public housing, ladies and gentlemen. CHA has never had an occupancy of 90% at all in our public housing developments. And that's because of a great staff and a great relationship that we have with our property management companies and everyone who sits in here who's affiliated with CHA. That has never been done before, ladies and gentlemen. 90% occupancy, that means we get more revenue. We get to make sure our units are in better condition. And because of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, our local office who's been working with us, this made it all happen, ladies and gentlemen. CHA is, is transparent and accountable no matter what our advocates say and the news. <laughs> CHA is the solution, not the problem. And CHA is innovative. 
CHA is transforming lives, communities, and housing across this great city. Housing is better, and so are the lives of our residents. CHA households continue to achieve higher incomes and employment levels than ever before. In the last year, CHA public housing heads of households saw their annual wage increase to an average of $21,072, while maintaining an employment rate of 64% for those who are work eligible. That is more than double what was at the start of Plan for Transformation. Overall, CHA's public housing heads of household employment is on par with the state of Illinois' overall labor participation, which is also 64% of 2017. Our residents are also buying homes. Using their subsidy for home ownership in 2017, 33 households purchased their own home through our Choose to Own program. 33. Sound like I'm at church, huh? <laughs> We're building more and housing more. In 2017, we delivered or had in progress over 1,800 units of new housing. Our user project base vouchers has allowed us to support affordable housing apartments in, all over in the city. We brought 509 new, to, new affordable housing uh, apartments using project-based vouchers. We have 708 project-based vouchers units in progress in 2018. What does this mean? Units all over the city of Chicago. We have investment in every one of our 77 community areas in the city of Chicago. This is the first for CHA, ladies and gentlemen. But we are not doing this alone. CHA is a co-investor, meaning that there are others doing the work with us. We need you, developers, all the main community organizations to continue to identify opportunities for us. One, one person I just do want to uh, mention right now, and I don't think we've I'm not sure what other aldermen here. Well, Alderman Moore, would you please stand up? I bring his name up because we could not do it alone, and you'll understand why. There are many, and I'd like to thank all of you for a special, special mention to Commissioner David Reithman of the City Department of Planning and Development, Commissioner Brian Bannon at the Chicago Public Library, and Aldra, the Executive Director of Ida. <laughs> it is partners like this that we are doing so much, more than housing and more than anyone envisioned even a few years ago. Innovation like the Code 3 located CHA CPL projects, the first ever in the city slash model for other cities. Three projects and communities, Concord at Sheridan, a mixed use project that brings a Target store and housing in the same building in Rogers Park, another first for CHA where we are an investment partner in the commercial end of development too, and that's Alderman Moore who helped and assist that. XS10 has just opened recently on the south side on the site, on the site of the former Robert Taylor Homes, an amazing place where young people will be able to get tennis instructions for a world-class pro and get tutoring and other support after school. Kamal, I'm just gonna call him out, he's scared to play me in tennis when he opened up the new facility, so I'm gonna challenge him again. And I said if I win, I'm gonna put my name outside the excess tennis facility. If he loses, which he will, I'll buy him a new tennis racket. <laughs> We're also investing in resident-owned businesses, businesses with the Section 3 program. Open the first ever Section 3 field office in the country, model for other PHAs. So good it drew the attention of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson, who visited it in January. Millions of dollars in support going to training businesses, business development and contracts through our job ordering and contracting program for small construction projects. And we are working with unions for the first time in CHA history. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the union membership who bought tables and so forth who are here. <laughs> Historic project labor agreement was completed last year. Partnership with the Chicago and Cook County Building Trades Council, the Carpenters Union, and a number of other members of trade unions are with us here today. And I believe that's because we, they are committed as we are to making this work. And I do appreciate you being here. Training the next generation workforce with a new apprenticeship program. Partnership with Chicago and Cook County Building Trades Council. That's another first for CHA. We're also, later this year, moving to a site-based waiting list for our public housing in order to provide our housing applicants with greater choice and opportunity to choose where they want to live finally. 
CHS has been using a site-based waiting list for our senior housing applicants for several years, and it has been proven to be successful, a successful model that serves the prospective residents well. A site-based waiting list will also create greater efficiencies at CHA for the management of the waiting list, and enable the housing authority and applicants to have a better sense of the wait list times and when housing will be available to them. Now, before I take questions, I just want to say one, little, one last thing. I want to remind all of us that this is a landmark year for all of us in Chicago and the country. 50 years ago last week, the Fair Housing Act was signed into law. It came one week after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. To think that began when Martin Luther King Jr. right here in Chicago. In 1966, he moved into an apartment building in Lawndale to the highlight of the struggle of black Chicagoans as he fought for justice across his U.S. Today, a new building stands in the very place Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. lived at 16th and Hamlin. It's a building made possible by Dr. King's legacy, a community developer and partnership that remains strong today, CHA, City of Chicago, and Ida. Our work remains as important today as, it, as when Dr. King was living in Lawndale. Much, much progress, still work to do. Together we can get it done. My last quote is to say, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And lastly, I just want to say, probably mid-summer, we will have a news press release that's going to be off the hook. It's going to be about the plan for transformation. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene Jones. Okay. And now we have time for uh, some questions. So if anybody has a question, if you would just hold up your blue form, a member of our staff will come by and pick them up. And meanwhile, we'll try to get as many questions in as we can. Uh, this is from City Club member Andrew Swanson. He's with SCORE Mentoring. His question is, how successful has the CHA program of grants been to tenant entrepreneurs. Real quickly, from our Section 3 program, a law that's been mandated by HUD back in the early years, last year alone we deviled out at least 40 to 50 million dollars to our job owner contract, to our Section 3 businesses um, and employment in 2017. We're very serious about providing jobs and education to our residents. And our mentoring program, we have a boys and, uh, we have um, Big Brothers Big Sisters, the biggest corporate um, opportunity that we participate in Big Brothers Big Sisters. And also I'm gonna uh, announce something later on with my staff with the Chicago Public Schools on mentoring. Okay, thank you. Um, this is from Betty Lou Saltzman, who's with the Sinai Health System. Oh, Betty. <laughs> Did you write this for her or whatever? Okay, but you know Betty. Okay, everybody does, great. Basically, their question is, what are the CHA investment plans for the West Side? She's particularly interested in the Ogden Commons project. Great question. We're moving the uh, Ogden project along. We have a great partner with Habitat, with Sinai and also with CHA, and also with Alex, who runs Center Space. And so we're moving that along. We, I think we signed our MDA, Master Development Agreement, so we're anxious to move that along. But it's just not on the Ogden corridor. We need to invest in the West. My board chairman and our board of commissioners agree that we need to invest in the West. We're doing something with Pastor Hunter, but we're gonna go to the outskirts of the West, of the west Side, not just the, not just the, you know, close to, I'm still learning Chicago after three years. But we want, to get, we want to delve deep in the west side, as we did at Cabrini and so forth. No one thought we could get it and get it done right and improve communities, cr uh, reduce crime, better schools and better neighborhoods. We think we can do the same thing in the west side, and we're going to be there. Thank you very much. Uh, this question is from Steve Greenbaum, City Club member. He's affiliated with Senior Housing Group, LLC. His question, has CHA thought about selling affordable properties through HUD's RAD program? Great question. 
We're proud to announce that we're the largest housing authority in the country that is doing a RAD program, which is a rental assist demonstration program. We are considering all aspects of the RAD program, which uh, the question was about selling. Yeah, we will do that, but we're going to make sure that we make the deal that's in behalf of residents and is a benefit to CHA. We're all open. We have t almost 15,000 units on a rental assistance de uh, demonstration program, the largest in the country. We have, we're looking at our senior developments, and we're also looking at new construction. And um, it's going well for us, and I, I, I think we have a great staff, and we have a great relationship with our HUD staff. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is from uh, David Jaffe, who's with National Home Rentals. His question, what steps is CHA taking to streamline the move-in process for the HCV program? Second part to his question, Gene. Boy, Jacqueline, I better enroll in your class because when I was in school, we didn't use words like this. Are any steps being taken to increase the intelligence of the algorithm used for rent determinations? I'm back there, you know, with Man. Lawrence walking the bubble. That's a loaded question there. Um, we are going to look at streamlining our process on the Housing Choice Voucher Program, our Section 8 program. We've uh, 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 selected a different contractor for our Section, 3, uh, Section 8 program. We're in the midst of making that transition. We have some issues on the Housing Choice Voucher Program that we admit to that has been told to us about that, and so we're going to correct that probably within the next six to eight months. It's very important to us that we have the, the best program, and we're going to make sure we make those improvements. The al see, I can't even pronounce the algorithms and so forth. <laughs> I got to look into that with my staff, but um, look for the Housing Choice Voucher Program to be a little bit different and be more responsive to housing people and not being deterrent to not getting people great housing, quality housing in the city of Chicago. Okay. Okay, this is from City Club member Graham Grady, fine graduate of the Von Steuben High School of Science and member of the Taft Law Firm. Gene, when will we have the opportunity to celebrate the successes of CHA alumni residents and staff? Question mark. Anniversary party, because Graham Grady is one party animal. <laughs> Good question. Well, to be honest with you, we're going to celebrate that this year in October. Um, I have changed that, and we're going to do that probably in 2019. The issue is that we want to celebrate our 80th anniversary, and we want to make sure that we have a venue for all those individuals who are living in public housing, lived in public housing, knew some of public housing, who have prospered because of public housing, just like Jocelyn has, has, has stated and so forth, to bring them back to reminisce and to appreciate what has happened in their lives and how you can help our young people in their lives to achieve the success that you have. Great. Okay, we have time for a couple last questions. Uh, this is from City Club member Michael Dubensky. Should the landlords who accept HUD choice vouchers be posted on the CHA website? Say that question one more time. Should the landlords who accept HUD choice vouchers be posted on the CHA website. It'll be a great idea, but one thing that we cannot do, we can't steer people to a certain area, or to a certain landlord or anything like that. We give them information for the, all across the city and they, and they choose. That's why it's called the Housing Choice Voucher Program. If we start steering, it violates fair housing, Gene Jones would be in the newspaper and everything else, and I don't want my picture in the newspaper. Not that like that. <laughs> Fine looking gentleman like Gene, he doesn't like to see his picture, I don't blame him, okay. Um, this is from Francine Washington down here. Um, Mr. Jones, how are you doing with the Section 3 grant for residents to start up their own business through the CAC? So our CACs are... Um our citywide resident, resident group who works with CHA and we talk about 
numerous issues, maintenance issues, and so forth. And Section 3 is one that we talk about with our CAC and how we can strengthen and so forth. Last year or the year before, we, we put out a million dollars on small grants, I think up to five or 25,000, so that we can create and start businesses for our residents who live in public and assisted housing. And we'll continue doing that in the next year. The great thing about CHA is we're moving to work, which is MTW. There's only 39 across this country. We're the largest uh, in this country. And I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, CHA with the MTW and so forth, we have done far better than anyone in the country when it comes to our units, our residents, our real estate, and our expertise of how we do things well here in the city of Chicago. Well, that deserves a round of applause. Okay, this question is from City Club member Mark Lovelace, who's with the Cook County Commission on Social Innovation. The question is, how is your office assuring that Section 3 listing is resulting in the hiring of applicants? Wow, I feel like I'm at a board meeting now. <laughs> It's the city club, you know. Man, oh man. You know, you, 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 it's not a perfect system, but we're trying to make it better. There are some that are going to slip through the cracks, but we're going to find those. The great thing about it, as I stated before, we're transparent. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, they're going to call me, they're going to email me, they're going to find me on the street. If we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, especially when we started the job order contracting and providing opportunities for our residents, putting money in their pocket, we're going to make millionaires when, it, when it's all said and done. Uh, the, the opportunity that our, our CHA residents have had. We are going to continue to do it. We're going to continue refining it. We're going to still, we're going to continue finding great people. We're still going to do quality control. We still got some, something to do, but we have done a tremendous job with my staff, working with our residents and our city partners. Okay, final question, thank you. How has uh, the operations of the CHA been impacted or affected by uh, President Trump's uh, programs and uh, for areas like uh, public housing and CHA? Well, I've always stated this before and I'm going to state it again. You may not agree, you may not uh, think about this, but the Republican administration has always done as well in public and assisted housing across this country. What they are encouraged is they're encouraged by our Section 3 program, they're encouraged by our rental assistance demonstration program. They want our residents to work, they want them to move out of assistance, and ultimately, Republicans want to do away with public housing. They want the asset to be gone and make everything Section, section 8. Hopefully they'll provide funding, but as you know, my colleagues, and they know across this country, it's a tough nut to crack because of the less money that Congress appropriates for public housing and assisted housing across this country. We do well with what we have, and that's because we have good staff, and we manage what we can manage. And can I say one more joke? Gee, I got you one can more say joke. Whatever you want. I got this. This is not the best joke I had the last time, but this, this, this is funny. <laughs> uh, no repeat jokes. No repeat jokes. So this is what kids, I had uh, our urban um, um, prep kids come into my office and you know, always asking about salary, what about this, what about this, but I, I like this because this is funny. Reaching the end of a job interview, the human resource officer asked a young engineer, fresh out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and what's my starting salary? What, what are you looking for? The engineer replies, in the region, 125000 a year, depending on the benefits package. The interviewer we inquires. He says, hmm, well, what would you say to a package of five weeks vacation, 14 paid holidays, full medical and dental, company matching retirement fund to 50% of salary, and a company car leased every two years, say a red Corvette. The engineer sits up straight and says, wow, are you kidding? The interviewer replies, yeah, but you started it. <laughs> Very good, very good. Okay.